Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Learning. In this episode, we're gonna do something with uh, Blender Particles that's gonna be involving also animation nodes for instancing of emitter and then sphere chalk add-on that will also do the tracing. Okay, let's get uh, started right away. First of all, um, if we have like an object here and then we want to apply the Blender Particle system, uh, we simply select the object and then assign a particle right you already know that and the reason we cannot just sim simply using a single blender particle system is that if we switch this to ran uh, vert vertices emit from vertices and turn off random you will see that the particles actually being emitted um, per vertices but it's like um, let's say you are like emitting um, maybe how many points we have we have eight points for the box so maybe we are emitting like um, 40 points you will see that it will emit five per points so that's a uh, that's kind of unfortunate um, in blender that it's actually doing it like that way uh, I remember trying to trace particles but um, if we kind of like uh, trace the points using sphere chalk we're gonna end up with uh, something that looks like this basically like just line like that we don't want that <clears throat> of course we, we want the line that's kind of emitting from each particle <clears throat> so let's uh, delete the grease pencil so instead of having just a single particle system we're gonna join this box into a single emitter point emitter okay so what did I uh, I select this object and then hit tab go to edit mode hit spacebar merge merge at the center so now we have a a point emitter basically a point emitter it's shooting this way because uh, because of the normal if we turn off the normal and then we look at the particles again it's kind of shooting down because of the field weight the gravity I'm gonna turn off gravity as well for this uh, particle system so we're just gonna have uh, particles that's being emitted from that point. Okay, now I'm gonna save this. This is ANSV instance particle trace. So sounds like complicated, but it's not that complicated. You will see. Let's call this uh, point emitter. <clears throat> so this point emitter uh, will be the master, and this guy will emit from this guy will be instance into an object actually I might turn on no don't worry about that I'll make another cube <clears throat> and this cube we basically we want to use animation nodes to do instancing of this uh, point emitter and then just place it and parent it to every vertices of this guy this cube okay so switch to animation nodes turn it on um, I'm gonna turn off always because that's process uh, processing heavy to the CPU so I'm gonna just use this if you have powerful computer just use always but because I'm recording as well it tends to slow down so this point emitter we will be instancing so we're gonna use object instancer get that object the point emitter and then we don't need to care the number of instances it's basically depending on the the number of uh, vertices points of these objects we're gonna turn on copy full objects and deep copy so that this emitter when we duplicate this the, the particle system will will come with it okay so grab this object and then use a mesh mesh object output I think get that object, get the mesh data um, there's actually object mesh data as well so I think we don't need to use this still grab this guy and select this plug this into the instance <clears throat> so we know that this is actually already creating bunch of point emitter and the next thing we want to do 
is to place it object transform output turn on this XYZ this is the location this is rotation and this is scale just look at from the icon there so for every instance objects place it on the location the position of that uh, polygon cube case it seems to be disappear what did I do wrong so I'll delete the cube and start again actually something happens when I actually use the other node so get that object and then okay that's I think that's working now so if I try to animate this guy Tap I and tap just a uh, lock rotation and scale and move it that way. Lock rot scale and then play the animation. We should have a trace of uh, particles because it seems to be working. We need to actually care about uh, the number of particles as well. So you can see um, this point emitter is being. Uh, parented to each of the uh, points of the this box, this cube. Um, I'm gonna turn off this parenting line, height relationship lines. Okay, um, these particles we need to care. Uh, let's say we have like 250. I'll make it 100. So for for each particle system, we want to just emit 100 particles. lifetime 100 as well so it's uh, this guy is gonna emit particles per frame basically we might need to reset the source data okay now I think we are ready uh, one thing you need to know if the object is not deforming each of particles trace is basically the same it's gonna be the same result unless unless this box is actually deforming so I'm gonna deform this guy as well to make it more interesting. Displays and assign a new texture. Give it a cloud. Um, play with the size. I'm gonna have an empty. Select this object. Texture coordinate assign it to an empty so as as this object is moving it should also deform and it should basically affect the particles right it doesn't seem to be doing it um, that's because we need to turn on use modifier here in object under object mesh data use modifier and now you can see the particles as it is it is being parented to this box and it is also moving with the box and it's also kind of uh, wiggling around okay so that seems to be working so this is a um, particle emitter parenting using animation nodes and then the next step we switch to sphere chalk and this is gonna be trace particles particles and let's do that real quick in spreadshock we need to actually source the object so we need to use object selector okay we need to select the objects with the name so see look at the uh, name of these objects point emitter one five so we need to select object with that name filter the name point emitter dot put the dot there because we don't want to select the master so now it tells you there's like if I'm not wrong uh, we can already see the result if we use the particles node plug in the objects and get the particles out of that guy okay see it's already working inside Spreadshop using the viewer draw so the next thing we want to do if you want use the UV connections 
UV connection is a is a way you can connect points in Spreadshop and turn it into edges. So that's the point. That's the edges. Yeah, you just give it a red color. Actually, this red color. The points, yellow, green. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, actually pretty much it. See, everything works pretty easily. See, what well, I'll explain a little bit here, just in case you didn't know. This object ID selector, if you don't, if you didn't specify any objects, it will basically select every object in the scene of the type of mesh. Type of mesh can be anything. Can be the monkey, can be the torus. But in this case, we also filter it. Filter it by name. Uh, point emitter dot. It's not gonna select the master. The master is called point emitter without dot. Now it's already filtered. From 10 objects, it's become 8 objects. 8 objects, and then we can just look at the particles. This gonna look at the particles, get the point position, and turn it into edges. If you want to turn it into other objects, you can use skin measure or polyline viewer. I like polyline viewer because it's gonna turn it into a curve. So that's uh, that's the whole process. Very, very powerful, actually. Um, Blender actually has a um, tracer. If I'm not wrong, it also comes with a Blender under the add-ons. There's a B trace. Oh, used to be here. Uh, testing? No. Uh, B trace. B trace is no longer there. Used to be there. B trace is uh, actually a very cool add-on. It can do tracing of anything, tracing particle, tracing components of an object mesh. But B trace, B trace, kind of like a baking. So in this case, everything is actually real time. There is an advantage of real time. I think um, you can easily, you know, for example, change the setting, and you're gonna get different result. You can even play, kind of interactively changing the attributes while it's doing it. So it's very, very cool that it is interactive. Interactive is the key point if you are using nodes. Um, at some point, you might create a setup with nodes that's actually super complex, and you're you're no longer getting a uh, interactive feedback. So that's probably not a good way to use nodes. I, I don't think, unless you have a way to bake it uh, and kind of process through a little bit by a little bit. Um, so the interactive thing is matters, and for some process, for example. Um, Perhaps for this guy, for example, I I subdivide this guy, okay, and then subdivide it once, and then I I update again. It should update the whole setup. So now it's tracing the, the objects. So now it's getting slower because I'm actually recording and my computer is not that powerful. So it's doing that and it's not displacing. I just switch the modifier around. So now it's a should be displacing while also it's already being subdivided. Um, there is a process, for example, like uh, the tissue add-on here. It's, it is another add-on for Blender by Alessandro Zombarelli. So this, if I, I already subdivide this, I'll apply this subdivision and then I'm gonna turn it into dual mesh. Dual mesh turn it into this uh, kind of hexagonal looking objects. So yeah, this is like dual mesh. It's like a very cool process, of course. You probably can turn this into a node. Maybe you don't need to turn it into a node. It depends because this is like a single, like a, like a once-off processing thing. And sometimes you do want it to be live, but it, uh, you probably don't need to have it to be live, just like, like when I said, if you are using B trace and the process is actually kind of okay without having to be interactive, then you don't need to use nodes. Sometimes um, you can kind of bake. If the whole process of baking takes you like overnight, like few hours, then that's a different method. Of course, you can do the same thing using nodes as well to provide the interactivity. Uh, but every now and then, if the node's getting very complex, you just want to bake it. Uh, remember, you can always bake the animations, turn it into Alembic, export, import. Uh, you can use animation nodes to bake 
or you can bake the actual mesh as well so there's a lot of option for you there so this is tracing of objects using animation nodes and stretch chalk add-on they work together okay thanks again for tuning in if you have any questions feedbacks let me know in the comments below um thanks again for tuning in i'll see you in the next video